Hi ladies, this is biochemistry, which is chapter three in your book if you need to reference it. Okay, so we're gonna start by looking at a couple of the different types of biochemical molecules that exist, or organic molecules. So you know that organic molecules can be carbohydrates, they can be proteins, they can be nucleic acids, or they can be lipids. So let's start with carbohydrates. Keep in mind as I'm going through this, you should be filling in um, your biochemistry um, organic molecules table. So carbohydrates, um, these are sugars or polymers of sugars, and carbohydrates primarily serve as fuel or building material. So they can also be structural. Um, you may have heard of something called a com complex carbohydrate. Um, these are made up of all those little tiny sugars, or they're actually the polymers. So let's look at those a little bit more. So uh, the building block of carbohydrates, or polysaccharides, are monosaccharides. So monosaccharides are the building blocks. And typically, the monosaccharide that we're going to be working with and thinking about in here is glucose. Okay, Another um, monosaccharide is fructose, but... Um, most of the polysaccharides are actually made of glucose. C6H12O6, this is the product of photosynthesis and what actually goes into cellular respiration. Um, note that glucose can exist in a variety of different forms. It could be linear, it could also be in a ring form. Whenever this goes through a dehydration synthesis reaction, okay, note when we say dehydration synthesis, Dehydration means um, to remove water, so to remove water to make um, a larger molecule. Um, removing water, okay, this hydroxyl group and this um, hydrogen from this one will actually bring these two molecules together and will form a glycosidic linkage. This glycosidic linkage is basically um, the, the bond that's going to hold these two together. This is the covalent bond. Um, you can see here we're combining together glucose and fructose to make sucrose. So sucrose is a disaccharide, which is the form that forms um, when you put these two monosaccharides together. Other types of polysaccharides um, are glycogen, starch, and cellulose. Polysaccharides are these polymers of sugar. Okay, so they have a lot of glucose monomers all strung together. Um, the structure and function of a polysaccharide is basically determined by how its sugar monomers are put together, okay, so how um, these glycosidic linkages form. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more, but just looking up here, you can see starch, um, pretty much a single branch. Sometimes it has like almost this um, helix-like structure, kind of spins. Glycogen, you can see there's lots of branching from glycogen. Okay, starch would come is a plant structural protein, glycogen, um, or excuse me, starch is a uh, is a plant um, fuel <laughs> polysaccharide. Glycogen is an animal fuel polysaccharide. You can see lots of branching here to maximize the amount of fuel that can be stored. Um, starch can sometimes also have branching. With you see, what you see here is cellulose. Cellulose is the structural plant carbohydrate. Okay, it's very strong, lots of fibers all held together. We're gonna look at those a little bit more in a second. So if you look here, um, we're going to compare starch and cellulose. So the difference between these two molecules is how um, the type of glucose that they're made with. You can see here that we have alpha glucose and we have beta glucose. And it really just depends on how this linear glucose comes together to form the ring. Sometimes the two hydroxyl groups will be really close together. Sometimes they will be on almost like opposite sides of the molecule. If you take um, chemistry, you'll learn a little bit more about this. But you can see here with starch, okay, all the hydroxyl groups are on the same side of the glucose. Okay, with cellulose, this is an alternating thing. Um, what's really interesting about this is that certain enzymes can only break down certain types of polysaccharides. So there's um, an enzyme that breaks down starch, can't break down cellulose. Most organisms actually don't have an enzyme that will allow them to break down cellulose. Um, sometimes organisms like herbivores and cows will actually, um, and termites, um, will actually live symbiotically with uh, different types of microbes or 
different types of bacteria that will actually have the enzyme to break down cellulose. So they kind of live together. The bacteria have a place to live and some food, and they also help that herbivore or that other that organism actually break down the, the food that they can't. That's why um, a lot of cows have like that really long digestive tract because they need a lot of time to get all this digested. Um, chitin is also another structural um, carbohydrate found in animals. Um, it's found in the exoskeletons of arthropods. Um, it's also found in the cell wall of fungi. So if you see any of those, that's chitin. It's an animal or fungi uh, polysaccharide. It's kind of like uh, the equivalent of cellulose in plants. The next type, next group we're going to talk about are lipids. Lipids are actually not true polymers. Um, and what's really interesting about lipids is that they're very hydrophobic. So um, they uh, they will not, they don't like to be around water. So, and this has to do with how nonpolar they are. Um, the different types that we're going to look at are fats, phospholipids, and steroids. So if we look at um, a couple of fatty acids, just to distinguish between them, you can see that we have saturated fatty acids and we have unsaturated fatty acids. Uh, looking here, you can see this little kinky area right here. This is actually um, long hydrocarbon chain. So even though they don't show a carbon in the hydrogens, at each one of these points, there's a carbon and then all the branching up hydrogens. So very, very nonpolar. So water does not like to be around that. Um, unsaturated just means that there would be a little kink, double bond. Um, this kink actually makes the lipids not pack so tightly together, which means that they would be liquid at room temperature, unlike saturated ones that are usually solid at room temperature. Phospholipids are another type. Um, phospholipids are made up of two fatty acid tails and a phosphate group. So you can see here, um, here's the phospho. Um, phosphate head. Here's the two fatty acid tails. These fatty acid tails make this end of the molecule nonpolar. The phosphate group up here makes the head of this molecule very polar. So it's actually this molecule is um, partially um, hydrophilic, partially hydrophobic. Okay, the polar likes to be around the water. The hydrophobic area does not like to be around water, which means that it's perfect for making a phospholipid bilayer, which are found in the cell membranes. Steroids are another type of lipid. Um, they're characterized by this carbon skeleton and typically include lots of fused rings. So you can see all these rings. Um, cholesterol is the most important one. We're going to be talking about this a lot when we talk about cell membranes. It's really important for membrane fluidity. Um, cholesterol is very important in animals. Um, high levels can be really bad and car cause um, cardiovascular disease or Type, any type of cardiovascular disease, but um, some is necessary. So cutting out cholesterol entirely isn't good for you. Proteins are the next group. Proteins are sometimes referred to as polypeptides. Um, these are built from the same 20 amino acids. So the amino acids would actually be the building blocks of this molecule. So amino acids are the building blocks. And what's interesting about amino acids, okay, they all have this amino group, they all have this carboxyl group, they have a carbon, which we call the alpha carbon, and then a hydrogen off here, but they also have this side chain or this R group. And the R group is what's going to make all of these different amino acids a little bit different. We'll talk about, I'll show you that in a second. Um, typically, um, if you combine multiple polypeptides together, you can build a protein. So the protein is just the functional molecule that can be made up of one or more polypeptides. Proteins can be used for a variety of different things, um, enzyme, storage, hormones, um, motor proteins, structural proteins, receptor proteins, transport proteins, defensive proteins that are found in the, in the immune system, um, all different things. Um, we would not be able to survive without proteins. Um, looking here, you can see how a peptide bond is formed. So um, when it goes through dehydration synthesis, removing this hydroxyl group here, this hydrogen here, water is removed. This will actually form that peptide bond that will hold two amino acids together. Uh, here are the different functional groups, which is, or excuse me, different R groups, um, the different types of amino acids. Remember, there are 20 of them. Um, some of them are what we call um, nonpolar, so they have like a lot of like carbons and hydrogens. Um, some of them are polar, okay? 
so they have a lot of oxygen and hydrogen and some of them can actually be acidic some of them can be basic and this is going to determine a lot about the function of that protein we're going to spend a little bit more time talking about this in the future uh, the last group nucleic acids um, they are made of nucleotides so that is the building block or monomer a uh, nucleotide is made up of uh, sugar Okay, usually a pentose, um, sure, with five carbons, um, a phosphate group, and then some type of nitrogenous base. The nitrogenous base could be cysteine, uh, thiamine, um, adenine, and guanine in DNA and uracil in RNA. Uh, the sugar is either deoxyribose in DNA or ribose, which is in RNA, so five carbon sugar. And these are going to link together um, to form a um, molecule DNA. Um, the backbone has phosphodiester bonds, so phosphodiester bonds, and um, connecting the two strands of DNA together in a DNA molecule, would, you would have your hydrogen bonds. If you look at a little bit more, um, note that DNA has a double helix. Okay, uh, it's anti-parallel. One strand goes five prime to three prime. The other opposing strand is the opposite direction, five prime to three prime. Hydrogen bonds holding together the nitrogenous bases and phosphodiester bonds um, linking the amino acids together. Uh, note that also that the sequence of these uh, nucleotides on the DNA molecule um, or the mRNA that's made from the DNA is unique for every gene. Okay, so that's why we have so many different genes because we have a lot of different sequences within our DNA. And um, RNA will usually exist as a single chain, okay, not double like DNA. Last thing we're gonna, I'm gonna show you for today is um, basically the continuity of life with our DNA. Remember that DNA is used um, to make mRNA through transcription, and then that mRNA through translation is used to synthesize a protein. Okay, so our DNA and our proteins are very um, interconnected. Okay, mutations in the DNA is going to affect the protein that is produced. Okay, this is um, your introduction to biochemistry. Please make sure you have all your notes um, on your table and bring any questions you have with you to class. Have a nice day, girls.